So now we're going back to the basics. We have a forward bias rectifier dial here, 1N4000. One is the part number, it's silicon based. So it has about a 0.7 volt. That's what you usually hear uh, drop, um, maybe 0.6. But in case we have about 10 volts at the supply and uh, we're losing a little bit of voltage along the way. But um, the diode is actually dropping some of the voltage. There's current flowing. The uh, diode is forward bias, cathode more negative. It's where the band is headed towards negative, anode more positive. Uh, so it's conducting as well as it can, um, but it's building up about 0.6 volts. And um, so it's dropping that from the resistor. That's what it means when you hear voltage drop. So out of the 10 volt from the supply, we're about 0.6 volts lower, somewhere around about 9.4, which is uh, what we expect. So now here's the diagram of the uh, circuit. We just uh, multimeter measured if you're watching the longer video in a previous short, if you're watching the short. So in any case, we have a forward bias rectifier dial there, the 1N4001, doesn't really matter what it is if it's silicon based, has a forward voltage of about 0.7 volts. That's how much it takes to conduct well as forward bias and it drops that voltage from other components. So when we measured across the 10K resistor, we had about 9.4 volts. And that's because we're powering it with a 10 volt supply. We measured across the diode, we actually had about 0.6 volts across the diode there. So it dropped that voltage from the resistor. Um, so that's what it means when you hear voltage drops. A lot of times you'll see diodes in circuits, uh, rectifier diodes, just realize everything past it is uh, 0.6 volts approximately less than um, the supply voltage and they may split it up even further. So now we come back to the forward bias rectifier diode with 10 volts across the circuit right here once I don't uh, run into uh, the wrong stuff and uh, there we go we got about uh, 10 volts. Now the forward bias rectifier diode even though it's closer to ground and cathode has to be to ground to be a forward bias rectifier down, it still builds up about 0.6 volts across it right there, whether it's on the high side or the low side of the resistor. Right now it's on the uh, low side. As long as it's forward bias, it will conduct. So it is dropping about 0.6 volts from the uh, resistor. So instead of 10 volts across the resistor, now we got about 9.4 approximately right there. These are rounded off of numbers. But in any case, of course, it will go up a little bit at higher currents and whatever. Um, that's a 10K resistor, kind of keeping it down. But main thing to remember, whenever you see a diode in a circuit, whatever uh, voltage is dropping, there's less voltage across all the other components in series with it. So now, we just uh, measured this circuit. If you're watching the uh, longer video or if you're watching the shorts, um, we measured this in the previous short. Now, we have the same voltages that we're working with in that circuit um, from a little bit earlier. The thing is though, at this point here where the uh, diode and the resistor come together, here it's the anode because the cathode has to be towards the negative supply in order for it to conduct more easily. But it still builds up about 0.6 volts, the forward voltage of between about like 0 0.6, 0 0.7 volts or whatever. It, that's the voltage needed to get it to conduct. It builds up that voltage. So it's still taking away about 0.6 volts from the 10K resistor in relationship to the 10 volts there. So the 10K resistor has uh, about 9.4 volts across it. We measure that with the multimeter. But usually you're interested in the voltage in relationship to ground. You might use that as a signal. So that's why we have 0.6 volts there. So now we come to the Zener diode. We're looking at diode voltages in basic circuits. Um, use, like if you want it for a reference voltage. So I looked at the value with the loop. It's a 5.1 volt Zener diode. And uh, this is a 12 volt Zener diode bag. Um, but in case they, you know, hopefully you get somewhere they have their value marked on them. But in any case, you can also do this process to see what their Zener voltage is. So I can't really see this because uh, the multimeter is in front of me. But uh, in any case, there we go. We got about 10 volts right there. This is a 10K resistor and uh, across the Zener diode, you use it reverse bias because you actually want it to break down. You got its Zener voltage where it will start conducting well reverse bias. And uh, so 5.1 volts, but this is low current. Probably with a 1K resistor instead of 10K, we would uh, have 5.1. But in any case, that's the voltage across the resistor. But usually you want to use that Zener voltage for something. So usually that's what you're interested in. And the Zener diode is going to ground. So now, here's the uh, schematic diagram for the simple Zener voltage with the 10K resistor and uh, 10 volts at the supply there. So 
not much current's going to flow through here. We actually fall, fell a little short from the uh, 5.1 volt. We had about 5 volts. I bet with 1K resistor, we would have got uh, 5.1. But in any case, main thing is we have pretty close to 5 volts. That's usually what you're shooting for with a 5.1 volt Zener diode. And uh, sometimes you may not see the decimal point for whatever reason. So instead of putting the V at the end of 5.1, you put V where the decimal point would go. And uh, usually you use it reverse bias, that's where you get the Zener voltage and you have it towards uh, ground right there because you want that voltage for whatever reason. Generally you don't have a situation where um, you're losing Zener voltage on the positive supply and you got a lower voltage down there. Um, that's uh, not very common, you may see it like here and there. Um, but usually you want that specific voltage for some reason. So you'll use that in relationship to ground. So now, we have a 10K resistor to the positive supply coming to the anode of the rectifier diode 1N4001. And then we have the uh, cathode down one row to the cathode of the Zener diode, 5.1 volt Zener diode. And then the anode head to the positive supply. You use the Zener diode reverse bias to get its uh, Zener voltage. So yeah, first we'll look at the total supply voltage right there and about 10 volts. Of course, the uh, Zener diode doesn't care what the supply voltage is. As long as current's flowing through it, it's going to build up about its Zener voltage, about uh, 5.1 volts approximately. A little bit lower due to lower current. And of course, we have about a uh, little less than 0.6 volts across the uh, rectifier diode because it's forward bias. Main thing is, though, we are stacking these uh, voltage drops, we'll call it, um, or we're adding to the Zener voltage, however you want to look at it. So now we got about 5.6 volts here. Uh, at that point right there instead of only having the Zener voltage which is about 5 volts. So now we come to the schematic diagram where we got a reverse bias Zener diode in series with a forward bias rectifier diode and technically we're also in a series with a 10k resistor because usually you don't draw current out of this you just look at the uh, voltage. So you consider that a series path right there where you're looking at the voltage for whatever reason but for whatever reason, we want somewhere around 5.7 volts at uh, the output here and uh, as a signal. And uh, all we got is like 5.1 volts in our diodes or whatever. Remember, uh, the V can be used to replace the decimal point because you may not see decimal points uh, from time to time. Uh, so yeah, you can just take other uh, diodes and stack up the voltage that they drop. You got to use uh, rectifier diodes forward bias to pass current through them, but that's okay. If uh, you know 5.1 volts is not enough right there, you just add a series uh, rectifier diode there. Now you got about 5.6, 5.7 volts, and maybe that is enough. 